welcome back to season one, episode five of Face Your Fears. We're your hosts, the Carol Bros. This week, we're welcoming back two champions from week two and week three. Let's go see who's braver. This is Marina, our champion from week two. Marina, do you think you're brave enough to defeat Alan? No, I don't. I think Alan will beat me. Well, I'm rooting for you. This is our champion from week three, Alan. Alan, do you think you'll beat Marina? Yes. Let's see. The first challenge is the lemon challenge. Each contestant will have two sliced up lemons in front of them. The person who eats their lemons the fastest will receive 20 points. Ready, set, go. It looks disgusting. It's very sour. How many is that? I don't know, but is she beating me? <laughs> How many does she have so far? Four, three more. She's got. Come on, Marina, you ten. got this. Come on, Marina. She's got four more after this one. She got one more. <laughs> Go, Marina. Oh, this is disgusting. Mm -hmm. For this challenge, Marina's in the lead with 20 points. But that can all change next round after our Bible story. Come back to see who advances to the World Series. Welcome back to week five of Face Your Fears. If you missed any of our lessons, go check them out on the Compass Kids YouTube channel. They're right there for you. Marina is in the lead right now with 20 points, but will she be our new champion? You'll have to stay tuned and find out. We have been talking about fear. And when we're afraid, God is with us. He is in control. He protects us and he cares for us. We're going to talk a little more about fear today. How many of you have ever been to the ocean? What about on an airplane? Did you sit next to the window or look out of the window? Did you notice how great big our world really is? When you look at the ocean, it just looks like it can go on and on forever. Or if you look out that airplane window, did you see the houses and cars and how small they look down there compared to the giant landscape? It is scary when we can be face to face with something that is much bigger than us. The ocean and the world are super big, but what about people? People can be scary too. You guys are still small, so you can probably relate to today's Bible story pretty well. Have you ever been around a person that is much larger than you? Maybe they're much larger than you and angry. They could be pretty intimidating, right? We have been talking about the Israelites for weeks. God has rescued them out of slavery. He has uh, protected them from danger. He provided for their needs and he stayed with them the whole time. And now he wants to lead them into the promised land that he has for them. It is a wonderful land flowing with milk and honey, he says. And he asks Moses to send 12 men, one leader from each of the tribes to go check out the land and come back and report it to the people what they find. So if you don't have your Bible, go get it right now. We're going to be in Numbers chapter 13, verses 26 through 33, and we're going to see what that land looked like. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there, 
The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours living things in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Those 12 scouts found a beautiful land with amazing fruit, and it was flowing with milk and honey, just like God had promised. The land was so good, and the fruit was so huge that it took two men to carry back just one bunch of grapes to the Israelites. Can you imagine that? I imagine it looked like a wonderful paradise, but there just was one little problem. It had giants living there. No big deal, right? Just some giants. Yeah, right. The Israelites were scared. They knew they had no chance of defeating giants because they were so much bigger and so much stronger than them. And like before, they started yelling and complaining, and they even talked about going back to Egypt again. They didn't have any faith or trust in God's plan, and they didn't listen to anything that Moses and Aaron were trying to tell them. There were just two leaders, though, that stood up for God's plan and trusted in it completely. Their names were Caleb and Joshua. And turn with me to Numbers chapter 14, verses 6 through 9, and we're going to see what they have to say about it. Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. I thought that was a pretty inspiring speech. What about you? The Israelites did not think so. After hearing that, they actually wanted to stone Caleb and Joshua to death. They were scared. All they could think about was how much stronger and bigger those giants were. What they didn't think about is that God is bigger. When we are afraid, God is bigger. When we are afraid, God is bigger. That's our big idea today, you guys. When we are afraid, God is bigger. Let's say that together on the count of three. Are you ready? As loud as you can. One, two, three. When we are afraid, God is bigger. Good job. God is bigger than any of the problems we're going to face, even the giant ones. See what I did there. God had brought the Israelites through so much already. He had shown and proven to them so many times how he would care for them and defend them, but they still didn't trust him. And because they didn't trust him and because of the way they acted, they ended up wandering around in the desert for 40 years. God did end up leading them into the promised land and the giants were not a problem, but they had to spend 40 years in the desert before they could go. You guys, we're always facing problems, giant problems, maybe not actual giants like the people, but we have lots of problems in our life that are really big and we are not meant to go through those alone. God can help us defeat them. Don't sell God short on what he's capable of doing in the midst of a real problem. So you guys, he is bigger and he wants to be with you to lead you through to bigger and better things on the other side. So trust in him. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for these kids. I thank you that I get to bring them your word. Um, I just pray that they lock it away in their hearts and they remember the next time they're afraid that you are bigger than any of the problems they're facing. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. You guys, I am going to say goodbye for today, but check out the next couple of challenges and find out who our next next champion's gonna be. Bye! Challenge number two is the worm challenge. Each contestant will have a bowl full of soil and pennies. 50 points will go to the person who finds the most pennies in a minute. But the trick is, there'll be worms inside the bowl. Something squishy. 
Ready? Set. <laughs> go. And remember, <laughs> and remember <laughs> you can only <laughs> grab the pennies, nothing else. Yep. Don't, Don't shake, shake it. it. Come on. Is that it? When you get the pennies, put them yes, on the sides. <laughs> so far, no Come pennies on. yet. Oh, that's three pennies. Oh, God, that's way. four pennies. Oh, wow. Um, sure. That's six pennies, oh, Alan. That's oh. seven pennies. <laughs> that's eight pennies. That's not even funny. Look at how funny. That's nine pennies. That's ten pennies. That's eleven Three. pennies. Looks Three. like Alan's One. got this. And, <laughs> nope, no touching. Stop! <laughs> Blindfold's off! They're Blindfold's off! Oh. Is that what? Yeah! <laughs> you got one on the floor! Uh, what'd you do? <laughs> I, like, I freaked out once I touched something. <laughs> pushing, I was like, it's not what? Yeah, they're a lot. <laughs> How, many How many did you get, Alan? See, look at her! She, she got... I, got I think 12. I, you can tell who's the farm girl and who is not. <laughs> Marina didn't win this challenge, which keeps her at a total of 20 points. And Alan won this challenge with a new total of 50 points. Let's go see the next challenge. Blindfolded obstacle course. The winner will receive 70 points, but the trick is it's full of sticky webs. Shh. Girls, you need to zigzag in and out of the trees and get to the finish line. You will be following our voices. Alan, you will be following mine. Marina, you will be following mine. Ready, set, go! Okay. Go right. Stop, stop, go right. <laughs> go left. Go left. <laughs> go right. Go right. <laughs> go left. Go left. Go left. Go on! Yes! <laughs> What's on me? Cobb one. Alan ends episode five with 50 points. And Marina got a total of 90 points, which means that she's advancing to the World Series. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Autumn, and today I'm going to teach you some motions to go along with today's memory verse. You ready? For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah 41, 13. We're going to do that two more times to make sure you remember. Ready? For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. One more time. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah 41, 13. Good job, everyone. See you next time. Bye. That means you got the that means you got the peel. What? You got the peel. Yeah, I know. I got half of the peel in my mouth. I almost ate the peel. What? Oh, Those were sour. Rachel makes some good I don't want to. Do it. Do it. No videotape me. It looks like dying. You didn't even eat it. I didn't eat it. <laughs> Yeet. Oh, yeah, I started. Whoops. <laughs>
<laughs> Which Jake, means she advances Jake. to the World Series. You are above every other Your love amazes me You created every beautiful color For everyone to see I want the world to know I want my life to show Just what your love has done for me Praise God, cause only you deserve it I want the world to know, I want my life to show Just what your love has done for me